Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad with another RA9. This is the uh, deep space observation probe uh, that we designed before launching the first Jupiter 3 probe. We are coming up on our relative inclination with the moon, so we're going to start uh, prepping for launch. Uh, I'm just going to time warp just a little, get that down to the 0 0.27, 0 0.25 range. There we go, that looks good enough. All right, throttle set to full, SAS is on, ignition. All right, ignition looks good. Let's get those clamps off and get going. Now this is probably like the 50th RA9 that you guys have seen go up. So we're probably just gonna go ahead and time warp or uh, video edit through most of it. Uh-oh. Eh. Seems that we're a little off on our heading already. Did we maybe scrape a launch clamp? Here's hoping. It's not showing any engine failures, so we're just gonna keep running with that and get this. All right, yeah. I can do all of that in time warp, and I don't have to bore you guys with these silly details. So anyway, I will see all of you in orbit. Okay, it's an awkward orbit. It's 423 by 138, but it's an orbit. I mean, mostly 138 is not technically orbital. Uh, let's get our antenna turned on here. Earth, that will affect our power draw. Right now we are at net zero, thanks to those RTGs. And we can put rendezvous planner away. Um, real quick, how long until our periapsis? Okay, almost a full orbit. I doubt we'll need that much time. So many things happening. Jupiter set his target. Maneuver planner. Create node. How bad? What's that going to cost us? 62800 All right. Looks good. Node is in two days. Never mind. Remove all node as soon as possible. Create node. 63. So a difference of about 100. Still gets us a good encounter. We're going to go with it. Uh, that node is in 15 minutes. Let's get that RCS system back on. So yeah. Uh, the only real difference in this probe versus the uh, Jupiter orbital missions is that one, this is not designed to go into orbit around Jupiter. It is designed to do a flyby and then get slingshotted out and away into the further, deeper reaches of space, which necessitated a much better antenna. This is the Voyager antenna, which uh, should keep us in contact for a very, very, very long time. I don't know if that range is accurate, a thousand gigameters. But uh, it's got a few less science experiments, notably the it does not have the biosample or the observational telescope. Uh, and other than that, it adjusted for fuel balance to compensate for weight of this dish and lack of science experiments. I think we ended up with a little bit more net fuel, but I'm not 100%. All right, so let's time warp in. All right, uh, about seven minutes out. Uh, H, H is the key that uh, Simulation Gaming pointed out. I don't have to keep switching to docking mode to do this stuff. I can just hold the H key and it will fire my thrusters in the correct direction. 
How cool is that? And we could... Hmm. I don't even know if an orbital insertion was necessary, just so long as we were still in space when we had to start this burn. I probably could have saved some Delta V off of this stage, although it does have quite a lot of its own Delta V in this stage. Anyway, uh, long burn times. So I'm not going to make you sit through it. But uh, enjoy the lovely blue glow of Hydrolox engines. They are pretty, aren't they? Yeah, we are losing charge at night, but I'm going to say that's probably due to that core. I hope. For the time being, we can shut down avionics on this one. It doesn't do a whole lot for us. Anyway, on to the warpy warps. I think it's this antenna that's throwing us off. Uh, I may have uh, misremembered the weight of that device. That will certainly be a problem when this whole thing comes into, uh, well, when the probe is our only active engine set. But maybe the RCS will have enough to compensate? Time will tell. I'm going to just let that dot four slide. Let's see where we're going. Focus. Hmm. Not bad. We're certainly going to make adjustments to that. Uh, actually, we might just as well do them now. The sooner that we can get rid of this stage, the better off that we'll be. I don't know why I uh, did that. I needed to hit backspace. So let's plot it for three minutes from now. See if I can do this in three whole minutes. Oh wow. This is going to be quite a burn. Quite a burn indeed, but all right, that gets us a good slingshot. Uh, I don't know how far off that's going to take us. Oh man, 2,400 meters per second. Do we even have that? No, no we do not. We're about a kilometer per second short. I don't really want to use the last of the probe's fuel to do that, and I'm not sure if I want to make this burn without knowing the telemetry it's going to fling me out on. I'm hoping for uh, an escape trajectory. <sighs> Crap. No, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of that node, and we're just we're just gonna wait. I think that uh, we should probably plot this after we leave the SOI, which will be in one day and four hours. So uh, I feel like we can we can wait that out, perhaps. See, so as we have a whole other spacecraft that we need to get rolling out to the pad, just as soon as we can. But before we go for the day, and we'll obviously be coming back to talk about a correction burn, I think that's a pretty good beauty shot for the day. Maybe? Maybe we should put this little guy out here like this. That's just... That's just pretty. Anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out and watching yet another launch video. Uh, we'll be getting to these uh, actual encounter videos 
uh, sometime later. But we've got some other interesting things coming down the pipe. Uh, one more Jupiter launch, and then we're on to something else for a little while until we get to some Jupiter rendezvous. Although there will be some course correction things going on there in the middle. I'll try to fold those all together so as to not bore you with uh, repetitive episodes. Anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I will see all of you tomorrow.